Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're planting some gorgeous perennials up in our Versailles garden. So these are two different varieties of flocks that I thought you guys might enjoy seeing because these are brand new varieties that are gonna be available next year. We got our hands on them a little bit early. Um, so something to look forward to for next season. This one is called Ultraviolet. Really beautiful, striking, bright magenta pink blooms. I love how big and bold they are. They're just so beautiful. And then this one right here is called Opalescent which I think is a perfect name, that soft kind of shell pink with the darker pink center. They do grow a little bit differently. You can almost tell um, based on how they look right next to each other. This one typically grows like around three feet. We'll see how it does here in my garden. And then up to like two and a half, maybe a little bit more than that wide. And then this one just stays a tiny bit shorter, like maybe 30 inches, 32 inches tall um, and about two two feet, two and a half feet wide. So very, very similar. They're gonna go in the same flower bed, but they'll be kind of separate from each other. Uh, but I think they'll be gorgeous midsummer color. And you'll see when we get up there, this is a perfect time of year. Well, every time of year is perfect to walk through your flower beds and like make notes. You know, if you notice that, oh, my, my spring game is strong in this area, which it is in this flower bed. We have it packed full of alliums. It's beautiful for lots of weeks in the spring, but right now I'm noticing a lull in color and I need something to fill that gap. So always be keeping that in mind. Like as you're walking through your garden, make notes like, ooh, I need to add some more fall color here or some winter interest, in my case, summer color. So these are very fragrant as well. And that's actually the first thing that Aaron noticed when we were gathering these up. He picked one up and he asked me like, are these fragrant? And they are, they're just like perfuming the air right here. So that's kind of another added benefit. And they attract all the po uh, pollinators, bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. So zone three through eight, extremely winter hardy. Phlox does really well in our area, and we are a dry climate, so phlox typically doesn't deal with some of the powdery mildew disease issues that some of the older varieties usually, usually a lot of people have problems with that, but these are improved versions, and they're much more disease resistant. So even if you live in a more wet, humid climate, you shouldn't have as many problems with these as you would with maybe the, some of the older varieties. So anyway, that's kind of enough detail. Let's head up to the Versailles garden. I'll show you where they're gonna go. So this is the flower bed where I plan on putting both of the varieties. This is in the corner of our Versailles garden. We started developing this area a couple of years ago. And while we've got some good structure in there, I don't have a ton for summer color. I mean, you can just take a look at the whole flower bed there and you can just see um, that I've got a little bit, but my summer color game is not strong. The spring game is. I think I have a picture of when all the alliums were blooming in here and it was gorgeous. Plus I have a patch of poppies right there that bloom white with a really like almost a black throat. And it was very, very pretty. But once those things are done, I need something to fill the gap. So what I'm planning on doing is putting the ultraviolet because I have five of those kind of starting my drift right here and curving it around the front of the poppies because poppies aren't the prettiest plant to look at in terms of leaves. So I have some, if I have something growing up in front of them to kind of shroud the leaves, it's perfect. And then right over here is where I plan on putting the opalescent. I have three of those and I think they'll fit in here perfectly. There are a few alliums right here. You take a look, you can see where the stalks are. So I think we're gonna have to dig up a few of those. So we brought up a couple of different augers. Let me show you, Aaron's gonna be digging the holes for me today. He's gonna use this big nine inch one for the flocks. It's huge, but it'll be perfect and really quick to dig the holes for these. And then he just bought this one because we're getting ready to plant bulbs in a couple of months, more fall bulbs. And when you plant a lot of bulbs, we planted, was it 3, 000. around 3,000 bulbs last year, your bat gets really tired when you have to bend over and aug holes for a long time. So he found this really long one. This one's also from Power Planter. I think both of these are. So we get to try it out today, which will be kind of fun. I also have individual emitters. I'm gonna be running to each one of these plants. This whole area is watered by a drip system, but the tag says that these plants want consistent moisture. And if a tag says that, I will typically run extra moisture to those plants, even though this area has a drip system. Um, and then I will be watching them in consecutive years. Like this year, it's really hot right now, so they will appreciate the extra hydration. Once they're established, I might be able to take those emitters out. I also have my Biotone starter fertilizer up there. I think we're set. So what we're gonna do, get them placed, kind of mess with the placement a little bit, stand back, see if we like it get the holes dug, get them in the ground, then we'll give you another tour.
These are awesome. I'm super happy with how they look in this location. Now you will notice I left a gap in between these two because I didn't really want to put pink against pink and have so much pink because my roses are pink as well. So I left this section so I could put something different in there, either like maybe a grass or something blue that's got the blue foliage on it. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know exactly what I'm thinking for that spot, but we'll leave that open for now. And then we'll have another section in between these two just so that there's not a ton of flocks altogether. And then these are the allium bulbs that we dug out of the ground. There's two, four, six, eight of them all together. They kind of like separated when I brought them up out of the ground, like there would be two together like this. And they just kind of came apart. They're not cut apart. So I don't know. We'll dig some more holes and get these replanted. And then we're pretty much done with this project other than the irrigation. All right, so I marked each spot where I want the alliums with a pine cone. Now we can see how this auger works. What do you think, first time? It's pretty awesome. How tall is that? Like 48 inches, I think. Four feet. It's a little squirrely. Have been that high. Yeah, you got a shorter one though, right? Like a three footer? I did, I have one that's one smaller than this. I'm, I'll try that one next time. Yeah. Like, I don't think that I would probably be able to use this one just because it's so tall. Like, let, let's see how tall it is when I hold it. Yeah, like, I wouldn't use this to plant bulbs. That would be so incredibly difficult. If you reduced it by a foot, I think that'd be about right. For me, anyway. If you were seven foot tall, that'd be perfect. Or if you had to dig a real deep hole. Yeah. You know? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they're the perfect depth there in about six inches. Yeah, so those will come up in approximately the same place, approximately the, as they were last year. So I know my distribution is nice. And then this right here, these are foxglove. They're either cafe cream or pink gin. I can't remember. They're one of two varieties I started from seed um, that, oh, probably FedEx, I'm guessing, that don't bloom um, the first year. So these will tower, they'll have the spiky blooms behind the flocks over here. So I think in, next year, this will be a beautiful layered gorgeousness. Well, that is our fun new perennial addition for the day. I absolutely love how it turned out. I mean, that was a desperately needed addition of color. And it's just fun to watch your flower buds develop throughout the years. I mean, this one's only two years old, um, and I do feel like we have it you know, we have it going, but we've got some more spots to fill in and some more opportunities to add in some stuff. Like I think next I'll need to add in some blue and then I do need to add in some fall interest. That's something that I've got um, some oak leaf hydrangeas in here and that's about it for fall. So I'm gonna be thinking about that as well. Uh, again, these varieties are brand new for next year. So if either one of them are of interest to you or really if anything that we show you in videos interests you, it never hurts to go down to your local garden center and let them know. Uh, because oftentimes they're working on plant orders in the winter, like the fall and winter of the previous year. So then they'll know what to be looking for. And then if they see these varieties available from their growers, they can make sure to snag them so that you can get them. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.